Good evening, everybody. Hell's Unicorn here once again. This time in the flesh, or at least the next best thing to it. I'm assuming right now a lot of you are wondering why it is I'm actually doing a video, me myself this time, instead of doing an audio commentary with a singular image enduring over the whole duration. <clears throat> As some of you might already know, those of you who, like me, are subscribed to Eagle Eye 1975, his videos have actually been set to private and his channel is basically all but completely closed down. I was actually not aware of this, but this actually happened a couple days ago and I wish to apologize to Eagle Eye for not being around when this actually started because I've been an avid follower of his videos and a dependable commenter as well and I'd like to think that I would do him the courtesy of being there when he has to take his content down because he has been the victim of idle threats by a as of yet unidentified third party. <clears throat> From what I gather, I have not had a chance to speak to Eagle Eye directly on this. This was prompted by the recent interchange that he had with a couple of members of what I refer to as atheist cult. These are people that confused atheism with being a status socialist uh, and conflating the two in most cases. The subject of these interchanges was the recent quote-unquote Occupy This City or That City movement that's been going on. I have some follow-up sentiments to give, uh, to give with regards to this movement, or at least a very large element of this movement that I'm going to get to in another video, and this has been prompted by some additional research and also some content that's been provided by some other channels that I frequent. But just to get down to brass tacks here, I am going to concur with those members of atheist cult who have taken upon themselves to point out that this individual in the third party crossed the line by threatening to drop docs on Eagle Eye and or his real first name, at least I think it is, is Jared, and to attempt to prevent him from becoming a public educator. <coughs> What some of you might not know is that I am actually a former public educator. Between the year 2004 and 2008, I was certified as an educator here in the state of Pennsylvania, music K through 12, and I spent the majority of my time as a public ed educator as a day-to-day -day sub. I had a few long-term assignments. I had assignments in most of the school districts in the eastern half of the state. I was all over the place trying to nail down a permanent job. Couldn't really find anything. And my experience has essentially taught me that the life of a public educator is not the life for me, so I decided to leave the field and I have no intention of ever returning to it. To put it mildly, the thing that I disliked about the life that I had chosen for that uh, period of time was that I was basically giving up my freedoms as an American citizen in order to get a daily paycheck, or at least I was giving them up for a couple of years until I was able to procure tenure and the union protection that goes with it. I was not at peace with this. I think it's wrong for a person's employment to be contingent upon his own personal opinions, which he is, in most cases, not sharing in the classroom. And I also think it's ridiculous the eggshells that you're, for, you're forced to walk on with, you know, with regards to classroom management. Everybody's a lawyer today, and everybody smells a opportunity to sue somebody whenever somebody's feelings get hurt. And with that goes any possibility of managing a classroom with people whose children have already learned how to bend and break the rules and get away with it. As a young man in the school system, you have to be on the lookout for flirty girls, particularly in the high school and upper middle school age groups, who concoct very wild fantasies and then tell them to administrators. 
You have to apologize every time you reprimand a kid for being a smart aleck and disrupting the class to the parents of that kid who assume how dare you do their job. You have to explain to an administrator that a student is lying about you when you reprimand them for making jokes about smoking marijuana in class. Now my own opinions about our drug laws are pretty well known here, but as a public educator I was basically forced to toe the party line with regards to such things. And even when I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, I was still treated with suspicion both by the parents of these students and by administration. This is the life that Eagle Eye has chosen for himself. And while I respect him for it, I respect his ideals and his desire to actually educate the next generation of this country in his respective locale, I don't envy the life he's chosen for himself at all. And quite frankly, I don't like the idea myself of being at the mercy of people like the one who is threatening Eagle Eye right now. I think that our educational system could do with a very nice overhaul. In fact, I think the entire culture of this nation could do with a good overhaul. But I'm just going to take the closing minutes of this video to address the people who were on the other side of this debate that Eagle Eye was having and have in spite of very strong disagreements have decided to stick up for him and to denounce the person that has decided to threaten Eagle Eye. I'm talking to them with no expectation and no desire for a response. If they come across this video I just want them to think about it if they decide to watch it. The primary reason I say this is because most of the people in question are people that have been blocked from my channel for being arrogant jackasses. This person who decided to drop docs on Eagle Eye, while I understand and I don't doubt your sincerity in denouncing this person, I just want to ask you this. Apart from breaching some basically unofficial code of conduct among YouTube users. What did he do that was actually wrong here? What did he do, this third party who did this, what did he do that was in contradiction to the spirit of this Occupy Wall Street and Occupy DC thing that's been going on? Essentially what he was doing was he was using force in order to deprive somebody else of their rights as an American citizen. That's what this was. This was interfering with somebody's pursuit of happiness and his liberty also. What do you think these protests in Wall Street are all about? It's about people that are upset that others have more than them trying to balance the scales through use of force, particularly force of numbers. Shutting down commerce between businesses in various cities and attempting basically to assert their power so to speak. There's a fine line between asserting one's power and using force. In fact I dare say the line all but doesn't exist. I think a lot of you people need to wake up and smell what you're shoveling because it's not freedom and in no way shape or form is it benevolent. With prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.